In this chapter, we will understand the basics about what is data structures. Okay, so we had a look of what are the programming practices for JavaScript and how to implement it with the various functionalities. But with respect to data structures, we'll have a look over here. Like what is the basic introduction and understanding with for data structures. First of all, let's analyze that data structure is nothing but a specialized format for storing and organizing a data. So I can say the definition that data structure is nothing but a specialized format or a systematic way for organizing a data. The next point is that it required data can be searched and spotted easily. Whatever it is designed, it can be easily spotted. It can be sorted out in a systematic approach and it can be maintained in your system. So that is the second point we can define for data structure. The next come is the memory usage. That is the feature. It's like the processor speed, like what is the speed of your system being very high. Sometimes it happens that your memory usage lacks because of the unsystematic way of keeping the data. But with the systematic approach of data structures, or you can say it is nothing but a protocol which calls for some set of algorithms to be followed. And based on that, your data is stored in your system. So this is a way for analyzing the data structure. The next is it provides less time complexity. Whatever it is defined, okay, running time or the execution time or the operations of data structures must be small as possible. So that reduces the complexity. So these are the basic features. Next, analyze about the terminology. After analyzing the terminologies, we will move on to the basic concept for why there is a need of data structures with the execution time cases. So first comes the terminology is the data. Data are nothing but the values or set of values. Your data can be anything. It can be the values in string, in numerals or any values which you want to save as a message which has n number of characters enclosed in it. So that is can be defined in as a data. So data are nothing but the values or set of values. The next comes is the data item. Data item refers to a single unit of values. Whatever the values you have, you can store it as a unit based purpose and save it in your system. So that can be referred as the data item. Okay. So next we have a section about group items. Group items means what? Whatever you have the data item, it can be grouped in somewhere and stored it. So that is called as the group item. So data items that can be divided into sub items and later we can have a grouping on that. So that will be included as the group items. Again, I'll repeat data items that are divided and which can be kept as a sub items are also called the group items. The next comes is the elementary items. So we had a look about data item and group item. Group item is nothing but the subdivision of data items. So here elementary items, they cannot be divided. So the data items which cannot be divided can be referred as the elementary items, which can be divided into groups can be group items. The other one, which is like a sole thing or a single unit are referred as the elementary items. So this is the basic difference between both of them. Next comes is the attribute and entity. An entity is that which can contain certain attributes, some values in it. So whatever the properties are present, like attributes and properties, which can be assigned values to the particular entity are referred as the entity. So they are interconnected to each other. So whatever entity is there, it contains a number of attributes and properties, which are have some assigned values to it. So that is the description for both of them. The next comes is the entity set. Entity set means entities of similar attributes from a similar entity. So that can be referred as the entity set. Whatever entity you have with the collection of the attributes together forms the uh, like as an entity set uh, with you. So it has a number of attributes in it. It follows a set pattern and it can be referred as the entity set. Next comes is the field. So field is something which is peculiar in data structure. Field is a single elementary unit of information 
representing an attribute field of an entity. So whatever field you have, it's like it includes a elementary unit of information, information which is very useful for the algorithm point of view or let it be sorting or anything. So these are some of the examples which a field can see. So it represents an attribute of an entity, whatever attribute an entity has. So it represents an attribute of that particular entity. The next comes is the record. Record is a collection of field values of a given entity. Whatever field values are there in the given entity, record uses that. After that, we have the file. File is a collection of records of entities in a given set. It's like whatever records you have, it is stored in a file and it is fetched accordingly. So these are the basic terminologies. We have data, we have data item group items, elementary items, attribute and entity, entity set, field, record and file. Now we need to understand one thing is the need for data structure. So we had a basic look about various terminologies but there is something which we need to understand that why data structure is so important. As applications are getting complex and data rich, so I'm moving to my previous slide, here I can say the need, the need is also described over here only. So as the applications are getting complex and data rich, there are three commons which are faced nowadays. First comes is the data search. So here I mentioned that the required data can be searched and spotted easily. That is a feature for data structure. So here only I'm mentioning why there is a need for data structure because once you have like an inventory with 1 million items of a store, then it is very, very uh, like a serious issue to search for a particular item in my store. In such a way, it is important to have a protocol like we can have the required data which can be searched easily, sorted easily and spotted easily as per your requirement. So in such a scenario, it is important that a data structure concept should be used. So data structure helps you to support as the data grows, it will be easier to uh, search a particular string or a value or an item from the required set of results. The next comes is the processor speed. Nowadays what happens? Processor speed although very high falls limited if the data grows to billion records. But if you have it in the systematic order following some set of algorithms, then it is very easy to have the memory usage stable. So that is what is the feature of data structure. So that is why a need of data structure increased because the running time or the execution time of the operations of the structure must be as small as possible. And because of this, we have the memory usage kind of feature where the memory usage of the data structure operation should be as little as possible. Then only we can have the need of data structure and the implementation will be very easier. The next comes is the less time complexity. Before that, what is the scenario nowadays observed is that as thousands of users can search data simultaneously, we have the asset property of RDBMS like we have automus, automicity, consistency, isolation and durability. With all these properties, what happens is that n number of users keep on searching for the data. It's like thousands of users search data simultaneously on a web server. Even the fast server fails while searching the data. In such a scenario, it is important that you should keep the less time complexity. So less time complexity is such a feature like for data structure, which is which has increased the need nowadays. Is like we have the systematic approach and based on this, if a n number of users are searching for the particular data, then we need to keep our memory usage stable leading to less time complexity. So that is why because of all these factors to solve or whatever the factors which I mentioned now, data structures came to rescue. Data can be organized in data structure in such a way that all items may not be required to be searched and the required data can be searched almost instantly. So that is why this is a need for data structure. Apart from that, there are certain things in data structures like we have the execution time cases. Like there are three cases which can be used to various data structure execution. Like we have the worst case. See, we have an algorithm which helps to search a particular data and fetch it. But there are certain execution time cases which are followed. So there is a worst case scenario. In worst case, what happened? This is a scenario where a particular data structure operation 
takes maximum time it can take. If an operation's worst case is like Fn, then more number of uh, like operations are carried on to get the particular data. So that is the first scenario that is the worst case. Second comes is the average case. This scenario depicting the average execution time of an operation of a data structure. Then after that comes the best case, the scenario depicting the least possible execution of an operation of a data structure. So there are three cases, worst case, average case and best case. Now while analyzing each of the data structure in our further chapter and implementing them in our JavaScript module, we will have a look on what is the worst case, the average case and the best case. Usually these kind of scenarios are best explained when we have the sorting algorithms in it. We have a quick sort, bubble sort and all these sorts algorithm have the three scenarios included in it which are the worst case, average case as well as the best case. So let's moving on to the next chapter is all about the description for analyzing the arrays and implementation of arrays in JavaScript.